Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be looking at how to find the angle of a conical pendulum. Alright, let's start off by drawing our diagram for this problem. So we'll draw our conical pendulum. This is like a rod holding it up. Here's a string with our object swinging around in circular motion. That's not a very good circle. And then uh, over here, uh, let's start doing our uh, variables. Um, first, we'll just give it uh, an area where it's rotating. For our example, it doesn't really matter, but we'll just say it's rotating this way. And then let's start with our variables now. You guys know I like my variables. So there will be no numbers here. <laughs> Obviously, there, there will be numbers, but mostly variables. Uh, m, and then over here, that's a mass m for that object. And then from the distance, this radius of this circular motion, we'll put as r. And then the length of this string, we'll press l. So, and then this angle right here will be theta. And we're going to try to find what this angle theta is in terms of these three other variables. And actually one of these variables cancels out and actually is not important in our problem. So you can take a quick guess for yourself if you want to see which one, which one of these variables actually is not important for finding uh, this theta and see if you're right at the end. So we're going to start with a force analysis for this object with a mass m that's swinging around this conical pendulum. And I guess why it's called a conical pendulum is because it looks like a cone. It's, it's a line of motion. Pretty cool. So uh, let's look at a free body diagram. Let's do a force analysis of this object. Uh, obviously, first we have our force of gravity going down. Fg, we'll put it as Fg. And then we have one more force, which is the force of tension from the string and it's not straight up it's at an angle and we're trying to find what that angle is so that's pretty important so right here and we'll put tension as t all right so we have these forces at odd angles so the best thing to do is to sum these uh these forces in uh different planes in uh, terms of the x-axis and the y-axis, so vertical and horizontal. So let's start by summing our forces in the vertical direction, since that one's actually going to be easier, as you'll see. So the summation of the forces um, in the y direction is equal to m a, the acceleration in the y direction. All right, so what forces do we have in this y direction? We have, the best thing to do is to look at each force individually um, and see if it has, if it's entirely in that direction that we're working with right now, working in the vertical direction. So we look at each force, see if either a component of it is in the y direction or its entirety is in the y direction. So first look at the Fg. Its entirety is in this is in this vertical direction. It has no horizontal component to it. If it was a little bit tilted, most of it would still be a vertical force, but then it have a little uh, horizontal component to it if it was tilted. So uh, we can use trig to find that component. So for this uh, Fg, its entirety is in this. Um, this negative direction, so we'll do, oh, my, my chalk just broke, but we'll, we'll keep on going. Uh, negative mg, since uh, the force of, um, the force of gravity, this, uh, this gravity force can be valued by uh, the mass m times acceleration of gravity, so of course, I like my variables, variables, so we're using g, and negative since it's going down, because uh, we're assigning up as positive for this example. And now let's look at t. 
does it have a vertical uh, component or entirety of it is in vertical direction? We can see that some of it is in the horizontal direction, some of it is in the vertical direction, some of this force. So we want to see what part of this force is in the um, the um, vertical direction. So let's make a um, boom. Let's make a triangle there. Let's assign this as theta. Since uh, through geometry, we'll see that this theta is equal to that theta. Yeah, that checks out. Okay, uh, so um, so let's look at this force of tension. Some of it is in the uh, y direction. We're assigned which part of it is part of it is in the y direction. So that would be this side of this triangle, right? So how would we find that through cosine? So plus, since it's positive, so t cosine theta. That is the vertical component of t, t cosine theta. Um, since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent would be this, hypotenuse would be t, we multiply that t over, and then we will get that adjacent. So this, is, this represents adjacent um, to that, that, uh, that angle right there. So that's equal to MAY. What is our acceleration in the Y direction? Let's look at this object right here. We see that it's not moving in the Y direction, right? And it's only moving in this, this vertical this, uh, I mean, this, uh, this horizontal direction. So if it's not moving in the y direction, it can't be accelerating in the y direction. So this is a big fat zero. We can put a zero right there. And then we can uh, just make this look a little better. T cosine theta is equal to add mg to both sides. It's equal to mg. And now let's sum our forces in the horizontal direction summation of forces in the x direction is equal to uh, m a x and let's see what do we got in this x direction let's 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 do right said um let's look at each force and evaluate if it has components in that direction f g does not have uh, any component in this uh, horizontal direction. All of it is vertical, no x component. So let's look at t. It's gonna have an x. We already established that it has an x and a y component. So let's find the y component. The y component would now this time be opposite. So opposite over hypotenuse. So it will be hypotenuse is the t, which is the uh, tension, times sine theta. So sine theta, so sine is, uh, we're solving for opposite, right? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is t. We multiply, we multiply that t, that hypotenuse over. So the opposite, which is this side that we want, right? That's the horizontal component of this, is t sine theta. That's what this side is. Okay, so M A, uh, M A X. Now there's something cool that we can do with this A X right now. We look over here, it's in circular motion, and we know that acceleration in the radial direction of something that's in circular motion, this, this X can also be, uh, it can R be R for radial, or it can be um, C for centripetal because it's all pointing, uh, it's center seeking, it's all going towards the center, the force. So, it's something special we can do. We can turn this A into V squared over R since it's acceleration in the uh, radial direction. So, now, what is our course of action? We have these two equations. 
Oops. There we go. Okay, we have these two equations. We want to find theta. So what we can do to simplify them is use our two equations. So, and uh, divide them out. I'd say that's the best course of action. So this equation divided by that first equation, t cosine theta is equal to mg. T's cancel out, T's cancel out, M's cancel out, M's cancel out. Sine over cosine is equal to tan theta, which is equal to uh, M's cancel out. V squared is in the numerator, R, V squared over R divided by G, G goes into the denominator right there, RG. And now we just want to find what this angle is equal to. This angle is equal to arc tan inverse tan of this. Since so tan is equal to that, v squared over rg. And there it is. That's how you find the uh, angle uh, of a conical pendulum.